Number 10, Corona Zombies. Uh, you know, I wouldn't even consider this a movie, but honestly, who cares? You know, they they did something, and it just didn't work. You know, this movie is other people's footage, and they took other people's footage, and then they cut it together, and they dubbed over it to make this dated pandemic comedy movie, and it really just, it didn't work for me. The jokes didn't work. Nothing in it really worked, but you know what? At least they made it. At least they made it because I I don't know I don't even know how how people can make a movie because with all the obstacles with all the the things that they have to deal with I don't even know how a movie can get made anymore honestly you know so Corona Zombies the thing is though if I put out this movie I wouldn't have been proud of it I would have been very disappointed that I had taken other people's footage that maybe I licensed and then I made it into like my own narrative with a little bit of shit in between. And, you know, something that's really telling about this movie is that Charlie Band bragged about this movie in his memoir. You know, he bragged about it and said, uh, you know, I'm so proud. I made this movie without having to do anything. And it's like, give me a fucking break. Like, who in the hell would be proud of that. Nobody in their right mind would be happy that they made Corona Zombies. So, and I really think that the jokes in the movie, they were dated, they weren't funny, there were a lot of them that were just references. Like, hey, toilet paper, hey, masks, hey this, hey that, my pandemic, you know, like, it really wasn't funny. And I'm, it's not because I'm sensitive saying that like, oh, this, this movie is hurtful. Like who cares? Uh, you know, that has nothing to do with it. It's just so poorly made and it could have been so much better if they had taken it seriously. And, uh, I really, it's, it's disappointing. Number nine is Unlucky Charms. I, this was not a horror movie. It was a a comedy, a satire and it's basically all about modeling. It's like a modeling satire. And, it, you know, I I was really excited because I thought it's a great title. It could be like Leprechaun. It could have great kills, probably great boobs. But it only ended up having one of those things, which was great boobs. You know, they had this one scene with this very beautiful... Uh, Asian model Nika or Mika and she she just had the biggest boobs and, and they were so nice and so that was a treat to see in this movie and then uh, they also had this really sexy model who was like the movie's bitch and it's it's unfortunate because I thought she should have been the main character uh, she was the most interesting she was the least uh, cliche in my opinion You know, they had this other character, and she was like, the nice girl, and she's like, the the final girl, you know, the boring girl who gets to survive because she's nice and she's boring, you know, that's who this person was. And then the, the leprechaun was the worst part of the film. The leprechaun looked like he was in a school play, and he had this fake beard attached to his chin, uh, and you could see the spirit gum attached to his chin, and it, it looked terrible, and instead of making a really creative leprechaun look in his face, they just put herpes all over his face, and it, it looks awful. It looks, it, it's just so bad, so terrible looking, and he was like a, a nice leprechaun, Like, just, ugh, this movie was trash. It could have been good, though. It had the potential to be good. I was very excited, and I thought, you know, this this could be, like, the best movie. It could have been. And then number eight is Shadow Zone. Shadow Zone is a movie where, unfortunately, they had all the right elements to make a good movie. They had Louise Fletcher, who kicks ass in everything she's in. 
they had a great looking zo- uh, monster that had looked kind of like glass candy. They had this uh, Asian actor who plays like a scientist, a mad scientist. I don't know his name, but he's really, really good. And they had a great setting for a horror movie in this underground lab that's very dark and shadowy. And I was really excited about uh, the the setting and how it would work with the monster. But instead, it was very boring confusing and messy. The most memorable thing about the film actually is is the opening where uh they're eating dinner and they just have this big huge pile of green beans. And you can clearly tell that they're straight out of a can and there's other canned food sitting there and it's just this plate of canned food crap. And, and and Louise Fletcher is like, you guys like your dinner? You like your food? And I was like, I feel bad that, like... See, that's how good that Louise Fletcher is. Is that, like, she sold that line and made it seem like, oh, yeah, someone totally made that. Wink, wink, do you like it? And I was like, oh, Louise Fletcher. She was just so good in everything she was in. Like, we've never really talked about uh, Frankenstein and Me, which is, to me, my favorite movie of hers. Uh, She did such a great job in that movie playing this bitchy teacher, and she was so good. Number seven is Witch House 2, Blood Coven. This movie, instead of emulating the first one, It spent too much time emulating the Blair Witch Project 2 Book of Shadows. It was horrible, and it it took all the elements from Book of Shadows and used them in the worst possible ways. There was a ton of uh, shitty modern music, modern people, modern clothes, modern looks to everything. Uh, It... Ugh... That's how this movie looks. To top that off, the story is trash for the most part. It's unfortunate. There are a a couple of good ideas. You know, they're, they're taking these dead bodies that have been discovered on this property before these selfish assholes are going to turn the property into a mall. And they uh, investigate and they research who are these people, why are they buried here, and they're witches, obviously. And I thought that this movie had great potential. In fact, I was really looking forward to it, and it was very disappointing in that way. And it was very disappointing that after the first one, instead of making a good sequel, they're just going to rip off Blair Witch 2 which was already a terrible movie. The best part of the movie is there's this part where they interview the townspeople, and it's very, very funny, and I thought that was the greatest part. You know, I was really... I I think someone can make a great found footage witch movie. Like, it really made me want to make one. Like, that's how much I, I was like, oh, God... You guys missed that. You missed that opportunity. You missed that. I was like, I was like cringing in pain, seeing these people just miss the mark on all these great things that they could have done. But overall, it wasn't terrible. Like it wasn't the worst thing in the world. It uh, number six is yum 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 yum. Forbidden Adventures. This was not what we expected at all. It's basically Porky's in medieval times in Italy. And there's lots of great stuff in this movie. Namely, the nudity, which is just uh, delicious and uh, just amazing in every way. And especially, there's this one character, and she's this red-headed uh, woman and her story is the funniest because this is an anthology movie and she is the sexiest character as well so uh, I really liked her but this movie was surprisingly funny 
you know, it had a lot of funny moments. It had a lot of funny jokes. And I would highly recommend it. I think that this is a good movie. And especially, you can watch it for free on Tubi. The most surprising thing about it was that they totally did something that Porky's did before Porky's did it. And that is the infamous shower scene where the guy sticks his dick through the shower hole in the girl's uh, shower room, and they all look at it and make fun of it, and then the teacher comes in and grabs at it, and it's really funny. Uh, I, I, I love Porky's. This has something where a guy climbs up the side of a nunnery, and he sticks his dick through the bars in the window so that his nun girlfriend can have sex with him. And then she brings all of her friends to come in to have sex with him, which is basically like gang rape, which is pretty funny and disturbing at the same time. <laughs> Just put that on a t-shirt. Marco from Safia Marco says, it's basically game rape, but it's pretty funny and disturbing at the same time. That'd be a pretty good shirt. Uh, and then the nun teacher comes in and she makes everyone leave and she doesn't grab it and get mad. She starts having sex with him. And I thought, like, oh my god. Like, just, this is this is hilarious. So, I like that. I like Forbidden Adventures. Sue me. Oh, actually, don't sue me. Because nowadays, like, everyone... Like, people are so, like, wimpy and pussified nowadays. That, like... I Like, people like, legitimately would sue people over, like, stuff they say in a YouTube video, uh, so I take that back, uh, I did really like Forbidden Adventures, though. <sighs> Number five is The Creeps. This movie had another fantastic concept where you have this mad scientist, and he, he brings to life the universal monsters, but instead of regular sized, they're little people. And I th that was such a great idea. It was such a fun, good idea. I thought this movie could have a lot of great kills. It could have some good nudity. It could have a great story, and I'll be happy with it. But instead, we got no nudity, we got no good kills, and it's PG-13. The only redeeming thing about this movie is the look of the monsters and then the actor who plays Dracula. I might surprise people. I might make people shocked, cringe, whatever. I think that the Dracula in this movie is the best Dracula I've ever seen. So, uh, I never would have expected that. But I really do. I would say this is my Dracula. And I would like to see him in a whole movie series with him as Dracula. Number four is The Alchemist. This was a very fun, funny, bad, good movie. It reminded me a lot of a movie that like Mystery Science Theater would look at and commentate over. It has that type of 70s cheese, sci-fi kind of obscure feel to it. There's a lot of great stuff in it. You know, I think the actors are pretty good for the most part. Uh, there's this really funny guy who, you know, he looks like Luke Skywalker and, you know, like a chubby face Luke Skywalker. And uh, there are some good kills with some good gore effects and blood, uh, demon blood. You know, it, it could have been better. It's another movie that could have been better. Uh, but I, I kind of liked it. Number three was Doll Man. This was just fucking awesome. I mean, you have Dirty Harry versus Jackie Earl Haley, sort of playing like a Scarface type character, which is what they said his character was like on IMDb. Uh, this movie kicked ass, and it was so much fun. It had a lot of funny moments, it had a lot of great action, it had a lot of great ideas. My favorite part is when Jackie Earl Haley, he's taking orders from this alien who is like a head attached to like robotic spider legs like in Toy Story. 
And he's miniature sized because he came from a different planet like Dollman. And Jackie Earl Haley just smashes him to pieces. And he's just a pile of goo. And I, th- I thought that was hilarious and so unexpected. And it was so much, co- it was so cool. I was like, I, I did not expect that in a full moon movie for them to do something. Of course, they were emulating Scarface when Scarface kills uh, James Caan, steals his wife. Uh, by the way, guys, do you think that Michelle Pfeiffer was worth it in that movie? I I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like, it, uh, I don't know. You know, I mean, I I I don't know. <laughs> It's so off topic, but like, I I never thought about that before until now, but like, was she really worth it? Like, was she really worth getting killed? Like, I, I, uh, I don't know. I don't know. In fact, I think that, I think that people from these full moon movies, I could find people that are more worth it to be killed over. Like the girl from Doll Man. Uh, you know, she was pretty hot, and she was a good character, and, uh, and then, uh, not, not the, uh, no, um, well, the Forbidden Adventures cast, any of them would be worth it, uh, Witch House 2, no, Shadow Zone, eh, Louise Fletcher's worth anything, uh, Unlucky Charms, I would say a couple, Corona Zombies, no, not at all. So, you know, there you go. Michelle Pfeiffer and Scarface was not worth it. Hashtag Marco uh, tells off Scarface, and Scarface gets mad and shoots Marco and then snorts cocaine off of Michelle Pfeiffer, bent over his table before he gets killed over Michelle Pfeiffer and Scarface. Hashtag number two, Vampire Journals. This is a movie I saw a long time ago. I used to rent it all the time at Hollywood Video. I would get the movie, a pack of gummy worms, and I'd be set. And I'd be happy with that. And I'd be so, like, just enjoying myself. I didn't really think the movie was good. I thought it was boring as a kid. But now I really, really like it. It reminds me a lot of Dark Shadows you know, they set up, like, this culture in New York City of, like, the vampire culture, or London, whatever the, wherever it takes place, and, uh, you know, it's a fun movie, it's got a lot of great kills, it's got a lot of blood, and see, this is what I expected, the violence in this movie, (coughs) sorry, excuse me, the violence in this movie is what I expected from, uh, the subspecies movies, so, I really, really like this movie. My number one is Intruder, which is basically like Friday the 13th in a shopping place, in a a store. And I say that because it's it's like a big store, but it's it's not a supermarket, you know? It's like this grocery store that's like still two or three stories tall. And I, I love this movie. I thought it was so much fun. It had some funny moments. It had some scary moments. It had a lot of great kills. A lot of blood and gore. Uh, It didn't have any nudity, which is kind of like a... But at the same time, it, 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 it had a lot of great stuff in it. And the villain, I did figure out who the villain was, but he, he was pretty good. You know, I, I thought this movie, though, it was so much, it was so awesome. Uh, I would totally rewatch this again. But Safi and I disagree. Safi would put Intruder at number two and Vampire Journals at number one. Which, you know, I could have gone either way. Both movies are very, very good. They're pretty evenly matched. So, whatever. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this Full Moon ranking video. Uh, Sorry I got off on a tangent at the beginning, but I just wanted to be honest because, you know, I talk all the time about honesty on this channel, 
And I hope that people appreciate that and, and they don't go, you know, whatever. Uh, so that is it for full moon week of 2022. It was very much a disaster because, you know, we, we were supposed to be like, oh, hey, I thought that was going to be the best. I thought that was going to be the worst. But Tubi screwed that up because <coughs> they took two movies off that we both thought were going to be the best ones. Now, I was right because I said that I said that Corona Zombies was going to be the worst, and I was right. Safi said that Unlucky Charms was going to be the worst, and she she underestimated Corona Zombies. So, whoopsie, Safi. Anyways, please like, comment, tell me what you thought of these movies, and then subscribe to our channel. And uh, I, I got to go do work now. I got a lot of stuff to do. Uh, so goodbye, everybody.